All right. Well, it is absolutely wonderful to see everybody out this morning on this uh, brisk. Are we still in summer? When's the first day of uh, fall? Well, you guys are good. September 21st. So we do. We have lots of summer left. So uh, looking forward, we are planning uh, for those um, that weren't here last week. We were planning to run this right through September. And if we are unable to meet here, we do have the ability. Joy has been very gracious to let us use the building as well. So we can either come, we are coming here, and either the two locations. So bring a mask if we have to slip into the building. Next week, we have the awesome opportunity. We had our um, <clears throat> baptism postponed a couple weeks ago. We are planning to do that next week. And we're also going to have a different kind of a fall fest next week. So we have, I believe, Sherry's till Wednesday to book food online uh, for that. We just kind of want to know numbers. So if you guys can kind of pre-register, you know, um, if there's friends or whatever that you'd like to bring, uh, then we just make sure we have enough um, for that as well. So we're going to have a few different games, uh, kind of COVID style, uh, not COVID sharing or passing, but restrictions. So we're going to try that for next week. Um, so come um, and uh, we're just going to pray that we're going to have great weather for that. Um, as far as uh, this morning, we're going to have a few songs. Kevin's going to bring us uh, the message again. Um, yeah, and then it's just great time to uh, get together. We are also, um, later on, last week we had some prayer requests. Not that we can't. We'll have that opportunity at the end as well if there's something that's on your heart. Um, but also, I would like to, sometimes we uh, feel like all we're doing is asking, but let's let's think as the service is going on today about some of the praise items uh, over the summer, over the last few days, uh, kind of where you're at, um, where God has kind of moved in your life over the summer uh, in these different times. So if you guys can be thinking about that, I'll give an opportunity to uh, share a little bit later what God's been doing and where you've seen God move uh, in your life. We um, also, uh, we are so grateful as a team at the bridge uh, just for just the support financially. Uh, we thank each one. Uh, we have the baskets going to be on the picnic table again. We thank you. Uh, the bridge has been blessed financially over this time. And uh, we're just going to pray for the offering and just pray that God would bless us at this time here now. So let's pray. Uh, but you are good. Um, we just thank you for the sunshine this morning. We thank you. As much as sometimes uh, it takes a bit to get used to the change of weather, we thank you for the seasons that we have here um, in Bancroft, uh, the four beautiful seasons. Lord, with that, the older we get, time seems so short. Father, but we thank you that we get to spend eternity with you because of your son. Lord, because you came and that you set up salvation and that you set up us, Lord, to uh, to give love back to you. We just thank you that we can give back to you financially um, in uh, in this time, uh, Lord of uncertainty. We just thank you for just the gifts that have been given in the bridge. We just ask for wisdom, discernment, and guidance, Lord, in the bridge um, uh, team, Lord, as we distribute that around our community and around the world, Lord, to help um, your kingdom move forward, Lord. I think that's what it's about, is just seeing you move, and uh, we just thank you uh, for the opportunity that we can even meet in this time. We thank you that we're able to meet here this morning. We thank you <clears throat> for the gifts and abilities uh, that we're going to see this morning uh, with Carla and Kevin. We just ask that you would speak through them. Father, I just ask that you would just help us pause, help us take some time to reflect on our life over the week. And as Kevin brings uh, your word, Lord, that it would just sink deeply into our spirits, Father, that we would we would ultimately see change in our lives. Father, we have so much day-to-day -day of the world pouring in, and we just ask for a moment right now that we would hear from your Spirit, that we would hear from you, Lord, on just our lives and us moving forward. Father, thank you again for this time and each one that's here, and uh, just bless us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Um, I know usually there's some song sheets, but this this morning um, Leah emailed out uh, the lyrics for songs today. So if you want to, oh. sorry, if you guys want to pull out your devices, 
This will be the only time that will allow you guys to use your devices today. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, so as I was preparing this morning, uh, for this morning, uh, I was a little weary this week. This was a tough week for us. Um, and oh, sorry about that. Sorry, bear with me for a second, friends. There we go. Um, yeah, it's it was it was a little bit of a tough week for us, and uh, we had a few things happen, and it just kind of felt like it was thing after thing, and um. We also haven't slept, so when you don't sleep, everything seems a little bit more heightened. But we thought sometimes it's hard to be gracious and be thankful and, and think about all the things that we do have when, when so many things are going wrong. And when I was thinking about this song this morning, the lyrics say, God, we're here for you. Um, we want to be here for you. And sometimes our hearts aren't there. But I just pray that as we start worshiping today, that we would be able to say that no matter what you're coming with, what you have on your heart. Um, we just pray that we would be able to say that with honest hearts. To be able to say, God, we're here for you doesn't necessarily mean we're here perfect, we're here whole, we're here complete. Um, we just say, God, we're here with who we are, with what we have, with this week, um, whether that was a good week, whether that was a hard week. So I just want that to be our prayer this morning as we go into worship. Um, Come to God as you are. Come to God with this week. And yeah, let's just say to him, God, we're here for you and we're here for what you want to do for us. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your light. Because we are here for you. We are here for you. You, our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down. Let our shouts be your anthem. Your renown fill the sky, cause we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life, cause we are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. Only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. You, our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise. Mighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. 
let every heart adore, let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Amen. If anybody feels led or wants to stand up, I know if we're moving a little bit, we'll be a little bit warmer. High raise and hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief, I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes, hope will arise Death is defeated, the King is alive Hallelujah, with everything inside of me, I raise a hallelujah, I will watch the darkness flee, I raise a hallelujah, in the middle of the mystery. Hallelujah, fear you lost your hold on me, and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar, up from the ashes, hope will arise, death is defeated. The King is alive. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. God, we thank you that you are the author of our, of, our, of our weeks, of our days, and God, that you're here to fight our battles, and that we can declare that you have victory over them. 
So Father, we just, um, yeah, we raise a hallelujah. We raise our, our praise and our worship to you. And we thank you that we can come and declare that you have victory over it all. Amen. This morning, as, uh, as we move forward, the, the topic that I picked today, I think, is something that um, probably for all of us is, is becoming an increasingly uh, pertinent question. And, and that question is, what is truth? <laughs> I have never in, uh, in my life that I can think of uh, been through a period of time where I am more suspicious about everything I hear. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's such a challenge to understand what truth is. Uh, we're getting... We're getting lots of information, especially when we're dealing with the pandemic and everything that's going on around the pandemic. And, uh, and there is an expert that can support every opinion that you want to have about this. <laughs> have, you, have you felt that way? And, and, and on top of that, you have uh, opposing news agencies, you have opposing political parties, and each of them saying that, that their truth is the truth and that everybody that doesn't agree with them is absolutely foolish. I, in fact, I, I've, I've been confronted with the, the idea that someone will put out an opinion and will say, do your research, and when I do my research, they will say, yeah, but don't believe that source. Right? I, and, and it is such a, a challenging time. I don't think, like I said, that I've ever been in a period of time where there is more information out and there is more suspicion about the information that is out there. And so this is actually an interesting question that Pilate asked while he was in interrogating Jesus. And, and while he was interrogating Jesus, he says, uh, he's talking to Jesus, he says, uh, they say you're a king, and Jesus says, is that something you think I am or just something you've heard? And, uh, and, and, he's, and so Pilate says, so you are a king. And, and he gets into this whole thing about truth. And Jesus says, what you say is true. This is why I came here, but my kingdom isn't of this earth. But those who believe truth listen to me. This is what Jesus ultimately ends up saying. What is truth is how Paul, Pilate ends that conversation. And I understand how Pilate feels. Because while Pilate is asking this question, there is all kinds of political pressure going on around. Uh, he is getting all kinds of information about this Jesus who should be executed, but Pilate can't find any reason to execute him, and yet um, there is, he's trying to keep peace. There's all kinds of things. What is the best thing that can happen with Jesus in this case is one of those things that Pilate is asking. What is truth? As we, as we move into truth, if you, if you uh, Google uh, types of truth, you will find all kinds of definitions. There's, uh, within philosophy, there's all kinds of definitions. You can have conditional truth or personal truth or universal truth. You can have empirical truth or convenient truth. <laughs> and as I move forward... I'm going to divide truth into two things because I need to keep it simple, okay? Thank you. So as I talk about truth, I view truth in two different ways. There are two different types of truth that we will experience. One is relative truth. That would be something like if I were to say Braveheart is the best movie ever. Yeah, that is true. For some of us. But for some others of us, it's not true. That would be a lie. Or I may say, you too is the best band ever. <laughs> yeah. For that, for me, that may be true, but for others, that may not be true. Or what you like to eat. Basically, relative truth is how information or reality affects you or makes you feel. 
Something that may be true of you may not be true of somebody else. The other truth is absolute truth. Now, so absolute truth could be that the sun is shining today. Now, what you run into is an interesting argument because somebody would say, no, 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 that's relative truth because on the other side of the world, it's not shining today. And you get kind of, you go, okay, okay. Regardless of where the sun is touching the earth, the sun is shining today. You could say that's an absolute truth. And someone would say, well, the sun takes about eight minutes to shine on earth. So to say that the sun is shining on the earth is relative because you got to wait eight minutes to know whether that's true. The sun may not be shining anymore. We won't know for another eight minutes. And it gets exhausting <laughs> when you talk about what is absolute truth. And in terms of absolute truth, there would be some who would suggest that there is no absolute truth, that everything is relative, and that we all have our own truth, and there is nothing that is absolute. And I would say that in our current environment, that's probably being more challenged than ever before because of what is truth. We become more suspicious. When it comes to truth, we have come up with a whole new level of distrust. When we have truth, when we understand truth, when we believe truth, we have the ability to trust. But what we have is an incredible decay in trust. And when we look at how that affects us in terms of faith and in terms of what we believe about God, things that we believe to be absolute now are being challenged just because of our mistrust of everything. When we look at truth and we look at what Jesus brings into this picture, John, in his writings, talks about truth and lies more than any other author in the New Testament. Out of, uh, I think there's 105 times that the word truth is listed in the New Testament, 42 of the times it's John writing this down. And so what I want to do this morning, I want to look at what John has to say about truth. Don't look that way, Kevin. When we talk about truth, as John is introducing Jesus, this is what he says. The word became flesh, or the essence of everything, the logos, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. When we look at what Jesus brings to us or what is brought to us through Jesus, it is all about truth and grace. And uh, there are all kinds of talk. We could talk for a long time about how we are given this truth to share, but we are given grace to share with it. it. It doesn't give us any opportunity to say, Christianity is right, let's go kill everybody else that disagrees with us. We are to address all of those around us with grace. But that's not even really what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about how we look at truth and what is truth. What is true in this world where we are suspicious of absolutely everything and we are being bombarded with the idea that if we believe something to be true, that somehow we, we are wrong for assuming that we can know something true or that we can believe something. Here's an interesting thing. Just a couple verses later, John says this, For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. It's this whole division, we've talked about this a lot over the last year, this whole division of how the law was given through Moses, but Jesus brings us something different. The law, the Ten Commandments, 
That comes through Moses, but Jesus introduces something that is different and something that is better, and it's all about grace and truth. That is what we are called to. That is what we are called to share. That is how we are called to share and how we are to reach our communities with grace and truth. John says a lot about truth. Um, One of the things that I find interesting with this, he says, to the Jews who had believed, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What John doesn't say is, if, if I give you all the rules and you practice all the rules, then that will set you free. What John says is that the knowledge of truth is what gives you access to God. It gives you freedom. It's not because you've lived by all the rules. It's because of what you know to be true. The importance of truth, the importance of accepting truth, is central to Christianity. Here's another thing that Jesus says, that John records. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I've heard it said that Jesus is a way. But Jesus doesn't give us that option if we choose to believe him. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is part of a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples. And they are talking about, Jesus says, I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a a place for you. And they say, how can we know the way? Jesus responds with that, I am the way. I'm the truth, the life. And then, as an emphasis, just so that we get this clear, he is not a way. Jesus says he is the way. And then, as a blanket statement below that, just in case you think he leaves it open to other options, he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. When it comes to Christianity, not even to Christianity, Uh, Jesus doesn't say, no one comes to the Father except through Christianity. Or through the system that is developed around the belief. What it says is that, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's that statement about relationship with Christ. Christianity in itself is a system that is built around that belief. But it's the belief itself that leads to salvation. Sometimes we like to expand on what is true and take some rules and apply them and take that as truth. But that's not truth when we expand beyond. Let's see what else is said here. As Jesus is praying, when he is about to be betrayed, he is praying in the garden, he is praying for his disciples. And this is what he says about the importance of truth. He says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And then he says this, for them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. A few weeks ago, we were talking about positional sanctification and progressive sanctification. (laughs) The idea that as we become more of who we are to be, our God-given destinies, when we become more of how we are to be, more of who God dreamed us to be when he created us. We are 
increasingly sanctifying ourselves. But Jesus says, as he becomes more of who he is to be, as he follows the plan laid out for him, and the, and the sacrifice that he makes for us, he provides this positional sanctification, this access we have to God. See, the importance of truth in all of this, believing truth, is central to relationship with God. And we have never been part, or I have never been in an experience where truth is more under challenge. As John is writing this, he is, he is emphasizing, as he describes Jesus' crucifixion, as he describes everything that goes on with what Jesus does, he says, I know this is true because I saw this to be true. The man who saw it was giving testimony. This is what John is saying. And his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. John says, I saw all this happen. I walked with Jesus. I know what Jesus said. What I am telling you is truth because I saw it and I know it to be true. This is absolute truth. This is not relative truth. And as we are describing what this truth is that Jesus talks about, that John talks about, this is absolute truth. It's not relative. It's not, it's, it's not dependent on who believes it. It is true regardless of whether you believe it to be true or not. As, as Jesus is confronting some of the Pharisees, they get into this interesting conversation about uh, who is right and who is wrong. And this is how Jesus combats against the Pharisees. He says, you belong to your father, the devil. <laughs> That's always a nice way to confront people, I suppose. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. <laughs> do you ever, do, have you ever run into anybody that you know they're lying because they're talking? <laughs> right? That is how Jesus describes people who have taken religion and built it for their own purposes. Forcing people to do the things that they think they should do simply by building up conversation that isn't true. John talks a lot about liars as well and lying. And so the question is, who is the liar? <laughs> well, I think when we consider this, if you think about the forces of good and evil, of God and Satan, every lie somehow is connected with Satan. Every truth is somehow connected with God. There are those two opposing forces. One is truth. One is lies. And so John says, you want to know how you can see the work that is working against God as opposed to the work that is working for God? Truth moves you in God's direction. Lies move you away from God. So who is the liar? It's interesting how John addresses this. Who is the liar, he asks. It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. He says, anybody that says that Jesus isn't the way, according to this New Testament, they say, well, that's a lie. What else does he say? 
If we claim that we have no sin, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. (laughs) If we think that we are sinless, if we claim that we never do anything wrong, if you put on your church face, then you are living a lie. Isn't that interesting? That, that John says, whenever you actually pretend that you are perfect or without sin, that is moving you away from God. That is not moving you in the direction of God. If you believe that you are sinless, <laughs> then you're telling yourself a lie. Another thing. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. I think I think that the church has been really good at lying about this as well. Cuz sometimes Some of the most racist things I have heard come from people who claim to love Jesus. And you think, there is no connection with that. That definitely doesn't born out of grace. If you claim to love God, but hate a brother or sister, you're just lying. That is not moving you towards God. That is moving you away from God. Another thing, whoever believes in the Son of God accepts his testimony. Whoever does not believe in God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. What it's saying is, you are calling God a liar if you claim or if you state that what he has said is untrue. Isn't that an interesting statement? When when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And you say, yeah, there's got to be another way. Then you are simply saying, Jesus, you're a liar. So who is the liar? (laughs) What is truth? As, as, As I sum this up, just to kind of introduce a conversation that Lloyd is probably going to lead us in. What do you believe? What do you believe to be true? And how do your beliefs affect what you are saying about God? Or what you are saying about Jesus? Do you Do you believe that the church is the way, the truth, and the life? Or do you believe that the one that the church focuses on is the way, the truth, and the life? Do you believe that you are perfect enough to access God? Or do you believe God when he says that he had to die for you because you aren't perfect enough? What do you believe? Because truth is truth, regardless of whether you believe it. We all have opinions. We all have beliefs. But simply because we have a strong belief does not make what we believe in to be true. So let's just use this last song as our prayer as we leave tonight, tonight, today. And even the first verse 
is just a declaration that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. In Christ alone, cornerstone we can make strong in the Savior's love through the storm he is Lord Lord of all when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. In Christ alone, cornerstone, we can make strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When He shall come with trumpet sound, Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. In Christ alone, cornerstone, we can make strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Amen.